Now in every aquarium you have to be concerned about what the pH of the water is because various fish come from various environments that have different pH levels. So things like this pH alert is a very handy way of being able to easily check the pH of the water. Make sure that you replace it regularly enough. You can also get other alerts like this ammonia alert just to make sure that your water quality stays high. So typically you're going to use a pH test kit depending on the fish that you've got might depend on the range of the pH kit you get but ultimately most fish like a slightly alkaline water if you put fish from alkaline water in acid water it tends to kill them if you put fish from acid water into alkaline water it's not quite as bad but you are aiming to make sure that the fish are in the right level of pH because that's the way they've actually evolved so there's various products you can use to raise the pH and lower the pH so you've typically got pH down, which is sodium biphosphate, which is going to lower the pH of your water. And then you've got pH up, which is sodium bicarbonate, which is going to increase the pH of the water. Depending on where you live, pH up can be a waste of time because in general, um, in Australia anyway, most tap water has got no carbonate in it. So when you're raising your pH, you also want to raise your KH otherwise your pH will just fall again straight away and will be unstable so you're better off using products like your um, KH buffers these sorts of products are going to raise the pH and the KH at the same time and that will mean that your pH will stay a lot more stable so, so being aware of pH and KH is quite important so at the end of the day if you want to lower your pH you can put pH down in for most fish you don't need to. If you are going to keep discus, angels, neons or fish that are particularly lower pH fish, um, epistogrammas, they all like a lower pH so it might be worth adding a pH down. In most circumstances you don't worry about running a pH down because even if the water has slightly higher pH that tends to drop quite quickly depending on um, the stock load because the animals in the aquarium are also going to be releasing carbonic acids and um, metabolic acids and all the rest of it that's actually going to drop the pH of the water quite quickly. So if you are going to raise the pH, instead of using pH up, I would use a KH buffer instead of a pH buffer. Another thing that's a huge variant on pH is oxygen. So if you do have an aquarium that's pH is dropping quite quickly, you find a lot of the time it's because there's not enough oxygen in the water. Having very good surface agitation will mean that you've got more oxygen and that will mean lower carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide plus water is carbonic acid which will drop the pH of the water. And putting in rocks such as Texas Holy Rock will also help to keep the pH a little bit higher. So it will also help to stabilise your maintenance. So at the end of the day, it's a matter of putting the right fish into your aquarium that like the pH the way it is. So if you want discus, angels, um, neons, fish that like acid water, they tend to be harder to keep because the tap water tends to be alkaline in the first place. So it's much easier to join it instead of trying to beat it. Whereas if your pH is already high, you can just add a KH buffer to the water and it'll stay high. It's very simple to do. If you're wanting to run things like discus, you're going to have to lower the pH and the thing about lowering the pH is that you're also then going to have to increase the KH because lowering the pH is also going to lower the KH. So anyway, there's a few things to think about as far as pH in freshwater aquariums. It really is quite simple. It's basically, don't let it go drop down too far. Make sure you've got plenty of oxygen in your water and you pretty much can't go wrong.